Yesterday, I, I went uh, for researching some personal uh, uh, information regarding uh, a freelance uh, platform. And I was like really surprised how many business owners were on this platform, like complaining about freelancers and, and per people they have worked and hired on this platform. Hello out there and welcome to our new Ask the CEO Q&A session here at the Virtual Frontier. On our today's Q&A, we'll have a conversation about how to do a competency gaps analysis and more importantly, show also how you close these kind of gaps in your projects, teams and organization. Let's figure out why it is important to distinguish between skills and competencies, how you balance between these attributes and how virtual teams can actually help you to close gaps when they appear right away and not after months of analyzing and looking for the right talent. See you in just a flash on the other side. So, hello man, and welcome to a new episode here at the Virtual Frontier in our Q&A session. Our topic today is uh, competency gap analysis and uh, putting skills into context. Um, it is really important to have a clear mind and a clear understanding when you're looking for new talents, uh, what, what gaps you're trying to close in the first place. Um, so there's a lot of uncertainty and sometimes you look for people to hire and you're not really sure what, what they should fulfill, etc. And so my first question before we get uh, into the topic is, could you um, tell us from your perspective, what is the difference between skills and competencies? Yeah, skill is more like a tool. Like if you, if you have the skill, if you are a copywriter, if you know how to write copy, that is a specific skill or a skill is um, if you learn the specific programming language, then it is um, it is yeah Java development, PHP development, whatever. Or if you have the skill of running Facebook ads, then this is a skill. So these these are the skills and the combination of different skills to support a specific use case. That's a competency. So you learn how to combine different skills in order to solve a problem and. Um, build a specific use case or contribute to a specific use case. For example, um, I would say a competency is if you are able to analyze um, KPIs in a funnel and make suggestions how you can improve the funnel by improving parts of the content, for example. Or a competency is also to analyze um, bugs of a software and find solutions how to like reduce the bug rate by improving either the process or the tools the developers use, etc. So you apply a competency to solve a complex problem while you apply a skill to do like a linear task, I would say. And you combine yeah. different skills to solve a complex problem. Yeah, I, I would even extend that the, it's the ability to put those skills like into, into really into work also with working, interacting with your, with your teammates, with your, with your co-workers, etc. Um, what, what, what leadership skill you might have, like putting all this, uh, um, knowledge and skill into, into work builds up the, 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 the competency. Yeah, right? absolutely. It's, it's applied skills. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Um, why, why is it so important, um, to have like the, the present and the future state of my like, business goals and like the employee competencies that I need, like really like sh sh sharpened out, like really a clear, clear perspective on that. Because I think this is where the demand is created. Um, or in other words, if you don't have that, you are just jumping between opportunities that somehow appear to be very attractive to you. Like there is a new, a new talent that shines bright and you get an application and you look at the CV and you think, oh, this is an awesome person. I just need to hire this guy and then my business skyrockets. This, I think this won't happen because you need to know where where you currently have a gap in your business strategy or in your operations to progress towards the goal that you set with your business and then you need to check if this gap can be closed by hiring a talent with a specific skill set 
right? But when you just like work with opportunities that you somehow see, but they don't contribute to a consistent strategy, then it's like, it's like, yeah, you, you're just jumping between opportunities and try to catch opportunities and make decisions um, opportunistically. But yeah, you don't have um, a strategy that is consistent and you, you cannot even analyze the gaps, right? If you have no idea where, where you want to be in like a quarter or in a year from now, and you cannot measure that because you don't have a set goal, then it's hard to analyze the current progress towards this goal and find the gap. And if you don't know the gap, then it's hard to fix it. So I think this is why you need to have a goal and then a strategy that contributes to this goal. And you need to measure progress continuously and then analyze where you are off track. And to get back on track, you need to find a measure. And if the measure, the action item is, I need to hire a person with a specific skill set in order to get some specific tasks done, then this is a good fix. And otherwise, it's just an opportunity that leads you somewhere. Mm. But I see this happens often, right? That, uh, or, but you just mentioned this uh, example that uh, there you see a bright, shining talent uh, in whatever field and they say, I, I, I want to work with this person. And probably you're, you're right, you want, but uh, um, yeah, you need to get this first uh, in the first place really right and, and structured. Uh, if not, it's just a waste of, of resource and uh, probably you're going to lose the talent yeah, faster than you hired it. <laughs> it happens. It happens very often, and I I know that I was acting the same way, like a few years ago, uh, when I was thought that here is an opportunity and it's a one time opportunity, so I need to catch it. And then your brain finds a rational explanation why this is really a one time opportunity, right? So that you are <laughs> totally convinced, and then yeah, you you just do it and you find a reason why it's valid to do it, and still you don't get any any improvements and no measurable effects yeah we, we talked already about um the skill the difference between skills and and competencies and when we talk about uh putting that into the context of a job description for example we 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 tried we have figured out uh, and have the structure and everything in place and now we're putting out the the job uh, description why is it so important in the job description to make a, a difference between the um, skills and the competencies that you're looking for in with the new, new hire or the new talent you're looking for. Yeah, because otherwise you cannot assess it properly. You cannot do one assessment for skills and competencies with the same tool set of assessments, right? You need to split that and then test for both. And if you, and it just, it, it's just like, which questions do you want to ask in the interview? And this question get answered by, okay, which insights do you want to get from this person? And if you want to get insights about the skills, you can even test them because either you have hard skills or soft skills, you can test them directly. And it's typically not so complex while testing for competencies, it's more complex as you want to, you want to see how the person behaves in specific use cases, like how the person analyzes problems and how the person solves problems, even complex problems and how the person is able to apply the skills. So I would say to test for competencies, you can do this in a role play or with a real test task, complex one, while skills can be assessed a lot easier. There are even tools out there like Dev, um, Dev Skiller or Test Dome or HireVu, where you can test for these hard skills. Um, there, there might become a, a moment uh, in a hire or if you're in the hiring process uh, where you find a person that is, for just an example, that is very skilled uh, in a particular uh, space, let's say uh, a great PHP uh, developer and um, with a lot of skill set and everything, but on the other side, a very low competency. Or put it the other way around, uh, a person with a really high competency in, in, in various fields, a great problem solver, whatever, but with a lack of skill in a, in a particular field. So how, how you make the balance? <laughs> That's a hard one. I, I think I would hire for competency because you can train for skills. While it takes a lot longer to, to train a person a specific competency, in the same way as it takes very long, if, if it is possible at all, to train a person for specific cultural behavior and habits. So I think you can, a competent person and a person that is a good 
cultural fit, you can train the skills easily, hmm. while it's hard to train a person the competencies that brings a specific skill set. Awesome. Yeah. Let's assume uh, I, uh, as a business owner or in the HR department, uh, need to make an, make an hire and um, I don't have the skill to really check on the other person's uh, skill set or competency sets uh, when, when it comes to a specific role. Uh, what, what, sh what should I do? Yeah, then it's not, you, you cannot test it for sure because the person can show you everything and anything, but you have no, you have no tool to validate it as you don't have the skill and not the experience to apply this skill. So you cannot judge if what the person did is correct or not. Hmm. But what you can do, and that's a good indicator, is to check for the competency of the person and the confidence, how the confidence level when the person explains you how they apply or he or she applies a specific skill set. For example, you ask, okay, look, we have this and that problem statement, and how would you solve that? And you just listen to the person. You cannot judge if what he or she says is correct, but you can judge the level of confidence that the person has when talking about this. And when you want to dive deeper, you, you ask the person um, to describe some specific experiences when he or she did that. So you want to see if that is just made up in their mind or if she um, talks about real experience when he or she applied the skill set. Hmm. I want to go just a, a, a step back um, and I, because I remembered uh, something I just uh, Yesterday, I, I went uh, for researching some personal uh, uh, information regarding uh, a freelance uh, platform. And I was like really surprised how many business owners were on this platform, like complaining about freelancers and, and per people they have worked and hired on this platform. Um, and they were not satisfied. They were disappointed. They were left alone. And um, they were like all, all angry or really like disappointed. I say, what, what is happening there? And then I, I looked in, in uh, like five or 10 different te texts and postings, and I could always find this like um, hint that they didn't do the first work in, or the first place, uh, or the, what I should say, um, the first um, step in, in the work and really analyze what, what they're looking for and, and not be surprised if afterwards you're not getting what you expected. <laughs> yeah, that's so yeah. true. That's, that's what happens pretty often. And I think you need to have the expectation when you when you start opening your talent pool globally and you want to work with global talent, there is a huge trend to uh, become freelancer. A lot more and more people become freelancers in the US. It's, I don't know, 35% already in Europe. It's something around 25 or so. But mm -hmm. that also means that a lot of newbies come into the market and you need to be prepared to have a good assessment to filter out 90% of beginners if you don't want beginners. Um, and only 10% are really skilled people with a high competence level that are a cultural fit and that can do the job that you want them to do. And it's easier for you to assess a person for skills and competencies when you really know what you need. And most people don't know that. They just know that, that there is too much work and they cannot do it. So they need someone who can do it, but they have no idea which skills and competencies this person needs. And that's that sets you up for, for, for disaster. That's yeah. why a lot of people have this experience, I think. Uh, we were talking about the, um, when it comes to really complex uh, uh, job descriptions or roles um, or skills that you might look for for uh, a specific project or in your company itself. Um, when comes the, the, well, when come the moment that I probably look out for, for an external consultant or expert that can help me to clarify what, what I, not, not, not especially for what I need, maybe also a little bit, uh, but I need to get clarity on that uh, first on myself. Um, but like how, how to get there, uh, at what stage we, we look for, for a consultant or an expert that helps me to get this uh, uh, job done. I mean, when it comes to getting the job done, I think you, as I said, you need to first be clear about the role. And if you are not clear, of course, you can hire a, an HR coach that challenges you about what you really want and like dig a little bit deeper below the surface to see 
what you really need and what should be the outcome of the person doing the work, etc. And when you really shape that and got clarity by a person asking you the, the right questions, or you could also look on, on the web or at FlashUp, we have also some, some templates how to describe a role properly and some examples so that you can understand what it takes to have a well-described role description. So this is the first step to hire a person successfully. And um, if it is a consultant that you need, depends on the job if it's just consultancy. And that makes sense for defining your role properly. But if you want a person actually doing things like a software developer or marketing manager to run your campaigns, then you don't want to look for a consultant, but for a person that has experience and competency to solve the problems you want to get solved and brings the skills to do it fast. No. Last question for today, Manuel. Um, how can virtual teams help you to close those gaps um, when, when you have analyzed them in, in the first place, how can uh, help virtual teams you really to close this gap like really fast? And what <laughs> makes the difference between uh, uh, working with local talents there? Yeah, it, it's just the answer to the question, how long does it take you to find any skilled person locally? And then like, how long does it take to find a person with a very specific skill set locally? And then you will come up with the answer that it's almost impossible. It takes like, I don't know, three to six to 12 months. And then typically the problem is already gone or solved otherwise. Mm. But when you work in virtual teams, the entire world can become your talent pool. So you can hire people from everywhere in the world. And that's a lot faster because th there are so many people out there that are ready to be hired right now today with the skills you need. You just need to know how to find them, how to assess them, and also how to become attractive for them. because really good people, they have plenty of opportunities to work like in any kind of job they want. But the question is, why should they work with you? And mm. of course, it can be the money. But even more importantly, if they should stay with you long term, it's to become an attractive employer and to have um, a well organized work environment where people, experts can focus on their expertise and not just mess around with all kinds of administrative stuff and doing management and everything that they don't like, but instead have a leadership system that keeps them focused on what they like to do and where they are really good at. I think this is, this is the key to hire globally and to be attractive for really good people. And then you can reduce your time to hire from three to six months to like, I don't know, two to three weeks maximum. Yeah. Is there anything that I have left out today, Manuel, or you would like to add as a, some closing part? Yeah, I think it's a good exercise to next time. Um, maybe you can link it below the show notes, the role template that we have at FlashUp to really fill that properly and um, get very, very clear of what should be the result of the person doing the job correctly. And then which skills and competencies does this person need to bring to increase the chance for success. So filling this role template is really the first step to hire a person successfully with the right skills and the right competencies. So we will link that below the show notes and then you can get started right away. Awesome. Manu, thank you very much for your time and see you next week on our next Q&A session. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We hope you found the session helpful. Head back to our in-depth blog article called Competency Gaps Analysis Skills into Context. Did we miss something in this conversation? How can we do better so you'll get more value out of our content? Let us know in the comments and reviews how you are detecting competency gaps at your company at the right time. We love to read and respond to your comments. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, give us a thumb up and share the session around with your friends and colleagues so they can take advantage of this content too. Sign up for the free business builder training on flashup.io and learn more about how to scale with your business at any time, work with global top talents and make work better. On behalf of the team here at the Virtual Frontier, I want to thank you for listening. And as always, remember, keep exploring new frontiers.